This conference will now be recorded. Thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Kristen Afrio. I'm a public information officer with the Whatcom County Health Department. Today we will hear updates from the Health Department Director, Erica Lautenbach. Before starting, I'd like to go over a few quick items. As a reminder, this session will be recorded. The recording will be made available later today on the Whatcom County Government YouTube channel and on the media page at www.whatcomcounty.us slash COVID. After we hear from Erica, we will move on to the Q&A session. At that time, we will invite members of the media to ask questions. If you would like to ask a question, please indicate this by typing your name and press affiliation into the chat box. The chat feature is currently disabled, but it will be opened at the start of the Q&A session. Please mute your microphones now and keep your microphone muted until called upon to ask a question. With that, I will turn it over to Erica. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Um, I wanna share first some, some good news, uh, and then I will talk a bit about where we are with regard to uh, phase two. So uh, first, as you may remember, the health department worked with the uh, county health board to stand up uh, a public health advisory board task force on COVID employer support about a month and a half ago. And that group has really flourished. There are 18 different sectors represented. There are over 140 uh, different business and organizational um, owners and employees. And they have held 18 sector meetings where they've gotten feedback on guidance and talked about some of the challenges in implementing the, uh, the state and, um, and federal regulations for their industry. Uh, our liaisons on the task force have surveyed uh, other members of their sector. And we've had sector to sector meetings where they have uh, gone over and, um, and been able to ask our subject matter experts questions and, um, and move forward with a set of, um, of guidelines for both our, uh, both our task force members and for people in, uh, within their sector that are not on the task force. Uh, what's been exciting about this work, um, in addition to just the, the volume of work and the, um, the participation from so many members of our community is we are, uh, we are starting to see that some of our sectors are uh, branching off and having additional open houses where they can collaborate and talk about what they're doing. Uh, it's been really encouraging to see that um, business owners have put their uh, competitiveness with other members of their sector aside and really thought about how as a sector and as a community, we can keep uh, employees and customers safe. And so there's, there's open houses that are being held um, I also was very encouraged to see that um, when the Bellingham Herald posted a list of uh, businesses that were reopening right right when phase two was um, made that uh, uh, possible for them, that a number of members of the task force were among those that were reopening uh, the day of um, or within days of that that phase two launch uh, because uh, we believe that they uh, they felt like they had tools and um, and you know had had conversations with the health department and really felt like they were ready and they could keep their customers and employees safe. And lastly, um, I'm really excited about some work that um, we have been doing with the regional economic partnership, um, our chamber leaders, and members of the task force to build a toolkit for businesses, primarily businesses that have in-person interactions with customers like um, retail, salons, restaurants, et cetera, and, um, and, and smaller businesses as well, uh, professional services. Uh, we've been building a toolkit with, uh, with very clear, attractive uh, posters, decals, uh, a pledge for businesses to share with their employees and their customers. Um, and other information that they can provide um, on their front door, inside their inside their location, et cetera, uh, that shows that they are they are working with the health department 
Um, it's a signal to employees and customers that it's a safe place to be as we enter this new world where there aren't a lot of um, signals for, for our customers who we're seeing are, um, are reluctant to go back into shops. Um, we're, we're allowing them to be able to signal to customers that it's, that it's safe, that they're, they're moving forward with measures, and, um, and they're keeping up on the guidance and making sure that their staff are, um, are trained and doing all of the right things. So we look to finalize that toolkit um, Monday or Tuesday, and we'll be pushing that out um, via the chambers and other organizations um, next week. So those will start popping up on storefronts um, within the next week. And we're really looking forward to that and continuing um, to build that partnership with businesses as uh, they are worked to try to keep uh, folks safe and healthy that come to their shop and work for them. So that's some um, great news and really good progress that we're making in that area. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about how we're doing in phase two. Um, we are two weeks into phase two at this point, and the, uh, the minimum number of weeks that each county needs to be in a particular phase is three weeks. So even as we uh, are starting to build documents to move to phase three, we recognize that um, the trends are not moving in the right direction. And if you have seen the counts in the last couple of weeks, um, they have not been moving in the right direction. And I'll explain a bit more about what we're seeing in those trends. But, um, but I, we're really at a point, and I think, Chris, if you want to um, show the first graph um, of our trends here, yeah, the average cases per day. So um, today, I just, um, I just ran the numbers again before this um, media conference, and it looks as though, um, it looks as though today, uh, Whatcom County will eclipse that 25 per 100,000 cases on average over the last two weeks. Yesterday, we were at 24. And when we applied two weeks ago, I believe we were at 15.6. So we are definitely trending upward uh, in terms of, of uh, new cases. And, uh, and that is, you know, that will um, likely prevent us, uh, unless we start seeing those numbers coming down, that will likely prevent us from being able to move to phase three um, next week as hoped. Um, so, and, and I guess it's also just um, helpful as a, as a reminder. So 25 per 100,000 um, requires doing a little math. And the easiest way to think of this is really um, that equates to four cases, an average of four cases per day. So uh, for example, we saw um, eight cases with an adjusted two from um, previous days. And um, so clearly that was over our our benchmark of four cases per day, which is really the, uh, the disease burden um, that exceeds our, um, our ability to um, properly respond as a health department, and, um, and that has become more and more of a challenge. Uh, so I, wanted, I wanna talk about a little bit more about the cases that we're seeing and, um, and the nature of the cases that we're seeing and the distribution among our population as well. We have seen uh, some significant increases in cases, uh, largely due to um, social events and parties. Um, and unfortunately, what happens in that situation is uh, when folks on the weekends, um, we, we saw some cases, um, some, some social events over Memorial Day weekend. Um, and what happens is prior to being symptomatic or with very few symptoms, uh, individuals who have COVID um, are returning to work after the weekend of, uh, of going to social activities. And so they're not only uh, contracting these from other people, there is um, much broader spread. Um, if you think about what life was like when we were uh, pre-phase two, uh, the number of cases we were seeing that had significant contacts were, were few and far between. Um, the exception was, of course, in congregate living facilities where people were, were living with lots of other people. But now when we see, uh, when we see social events that exceed, um, far exceed the five, uh, five people, non-household people per week, um, 
by by many fold, um, 50 plus kinds of parties. There is um, a much higher um, much higher likelihood that that people will have more and more uh, contacts associated with that case. And then if they're going to work, um, there are additional contacts there. And if they're seeing extended family, um, parents, grandparents, etc., um, there are additional contacts there. So in addition to the um, the average cases per day, we're also just seeing um, a, a, a very a very significant increase in the number of contacts and close contacts associated with each of those cases. So I will, uh, let's see, Chris, could you forward us to graph two, please? Okay. Um, and so we have talked a little bit about this, but I just want to share, I think this data is really important. We have essentially completely flipped um, in terms of the age demographic that we're seeing in cases. So as you can see in April, 73% uh, of new cases were among people 30 years or older. And uh, the last three weeks in June, we have now seen that 74% of cases, so nearly a full swap, 74% of new cases are among uh, people uh, 29 or younger. Um, I also can show you the, um, Chris, if you could go to the next slide. So that's significant um, and a significant new population that we um, that we as health officials are trying to reach. And um, and then I'll also show you that um, you can see the increases by school district um, in the cases that we've seen. So um, all uh, all school districts have seen um, either um, decreases or essentially um, a hold steady pattern except for the Linden School District and that's where we're seeing the most um, dramatic increases in reported cases in that school district. So um, so we continue to work through this and um, and we are we are um, very aware of um, the the needs of the community and um, really trying to do our best as a health department to uh, to work with businesses to work with um, individuals who are identified as cases to contact their close contacts and make sure that they get tested and um, to maintain a daily contact with everyone who is in uh, home isolation and quarantine to ensure that they uh, have the information and supports available to them so they can successfully maintain their isolation and quarantine. Uh, but we are um, just today um, in, a, in a staff meeting this morning, we have uh, 31 new people that we have to reach out to um, for an extensive, um, uh, in essentially an extensive interview um, today, and we're tracking um, daily uh, currently 133 people. So um, as there are more contacts associated with cases, um, there, are, there are many more, um, many more contacts that we need to reach um, and make sure that, um, that they are getting tested and able to maintain their quarantine. So with that, I will, uh, I will open it up for questions and happy to um, field any that I can and, and refer you to those um, colleagues of mine or those that I can't. Also, Chris, I think um, we're happy to share these uh, data charts as well um, with, uh, with folks that would like them. Okay, thank you very much. The first question will come from Key with the Bellingham Herald. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Erica. This is Key with the Herald. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Key. Okay, thank you. Um, can you explain, or you had said that the increases um, uh, when you were showing the graph about the school districts, that they were increasing the most in the Linden School District 
Um, and so can you tell me what is happening there best you know that is accounting for that increase? Yeah, what, what we're finding is um, that's a, um, a, a place where we've seen and, um, and gotten information from our cases and contacts that there have been social, um, social events in, in the school district where people are contracting virus. Okay, I'm sorry, you said it was a social event? Yeah, yeah. multiple social events and activities where people are contracting the virus. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, our next question will come from Robert Mittendorf of the Bellingham Herald. Robert, please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, thanks, Erica. Um, I actually have two questions, if you don't mind. One, uh, are you worried about um, falling back into phase one? Um, you know, at this point, I think, and, and we've talked about this a little bit, uh, we're really focused, and the state is really focused on sort of um, how our county is performing holistically, uh, mm -hmm. not just on one measure or another. And, and some of the key areas that we're looking at um, other than the case counts, which are really important, are the severity of the cases that, that our community is experiencing. Mm -hmm. And those we see in terms of number of deaths. And we've had two deaths in the last month, um, which, you know, is, is significant and, of course, um, not what we want to see. But in terms of um, the, the number of cases that result in death, it's, uh, it's fairly low. Um, we also are seeing uh, Peace Health having um, ample capacity to accommodate um, a medical surge at this point, and we have uh, we are nowhere near our um, our capacity at our isolation and quarantine facility at this point. And there are um, other options available for isolation and quarantine that our Whatcom Unified has um, has worked with. So we do have capacity in those areas. And, and in terms of um, in the event of a surge or needed for more medical services. But we also, uh, so those areas are, are positive. Um, but we, in addition to the cases, um, we also are seeing um, more outbreaks in the community um, and in workplaces than, um, than we'd like to see and that the state would like to see. Uh, the, the threshold for outbreaks is um, is is more of a, a kind of a um, a clinical threshold. Um, so it's for workplaces, it's uh, two cases over the course of two weeks, which uh, for many of us um, feels like anything else would be a one-off, frankly, um, given that most people spend a lot of time at work and are around other people. So um, it's a very low threshold for outbreak, and in long-term care facilities. Um, a single case over the course of two weeks would result in that being considered an outbreak. So while we continue to um, investigate and work with businesses on outbreaks, um, we, we are much higher than what the state would want, which is one outbreak um, for a community our, our size. So, um, and then my second question is, uh, it's been just about two weeks since the first of the uh, rallies and marches um, uh, in support of the Black Lives Matter movement began. Uh, are you starting to see evidence of a spike linked to those first, um, there was a march and a, and a, and a vigil uh, in late May, and then uh, two, almost two weeks ago, the big rally at Maritime Heritage Park. Mm -hmm. uh, from my conversation earlier this week with staff, we we cannot identify a case that is um, definitively linked to either the protest or the rally. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The next question will come from Oliver Lazenby with the Northern Light. Oliver, please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Erica. Thank you. And I had some connection issues, so apologies if you spoke about this. But um, how is the county doing now with case and contact investigations? Um, are we are you hitting those uh, safe start 
thresholds for contacting cases within 24 hours and contacts within 48 hours? We, we are hitting, uh, I believe we are at 97% um, of following up on uh, newly confirmed cases within one day. Um, our, we are not hitting, um, we are not hitting our mark in terms of um, identifying close contacts in part because um, in part because we don't always know who the close contacts are until we do additional investigation um, because there are so many um, more close contacts with cases uh, they may not remember everyone or they may not know everyone that was at an event with them and so it's not until we move through the process of identifying those that the cases have identified that we're able to learn of more close contacts. So that is actually something that we're talking with the state about. Um, the challenge as, as we see these larger events in being able to really identify quickly all of the various close contacts. So um, I'm actually talking with the state about that tomorrow in a, in a phone call. Key has another question. Key, please unmute your mic and ask your question. Thank you. Um, Erica, are you, speaking of uh, gatherings, are you concerned that there may be uh, additional gatherings um, this weekend because of Father's Day? And then also, um, could you please explain uh, or go over the numbers that you had talked about. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to scroll through my notes right here. Um, sure. Where you had said uh, earlier in the briefing that there were 31 new people that the health department has to reach out to for an extensive interview today, and you're tracking daily 133 people. Can you explain what you mean by those two numbers? Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so, it, very short answer to your first question. Emphatically, yes, we're very concerned about this weekend, about Fourth of July, um, about um, about any any events and activities um, that um, that are above five people that then result in um, in our cases going up and uh, and and create instability in our ability to move forward to phase three. So we are very concerned about that. Um, it has always been our goal to um, to make sure that we um, that we move forward with allowing businesses to open and people to get back to work. And um, a very distant second goal is for people to have parties and socialize. And we're concerned that these social events and parties are putting um, all of that economic recovery at risk. Uh, the uh, the second question um, about the about um, and and this is this is for context just so you get a sense of um, the the volume of work that um, that's required um, of health department employees in terms of, of of reaching out to all of these various cases and contacts. So um, each day when we learn of new cases, um, we uh, we reach out to them and do um, a, an extensive interview, which could take up to an hour or two, depending on the number of contacts and um, and their ability to share um, the experiences that and and the um, occasions that may have led them to become a positive case, as well as all the contacts that they have. Um, so between uh, newly identified cases and um, and identified from cases. Uh, additional context, we are doing these extensive interviews with 31 people. So that's a combination of both cases and context. And then um, as a requirement from the state, um, we, we, need to, um, we need to reach out to everyone um, during their period of isolation and quarantine or quarantine on a daily basis. So that number 133 are the additional people that we are reaching out to that are either um, in a period of home isolation or home quarantine. And that number changes every day as we have new people in quarantine or isolation and as people uh, uh, graduate from, essentially graduate from their, their period of isolation and quarantine. But that's our today numbers. Yesterday, I think it was 172. So it varies. Um, 
but we are we are required to make that daily contact um, just to ensure that um, that if people need supports like uh, like food delivery, diapers, uh, rental assistance, et cetera, in order to successfully maintain their isolation or quarantine, that we're able to then quickly triage those to service agencies that can help provide those services. I have another question if no one else does. Okay, sure. Um, related to um, the increase in cases and uh, people gathering, um, you know, we see a lot of griping on, um, I should say, griping and or concern on social media about masks. Um, and they want to know why uh, or some people, I should say, want to know why there isn't more of a push from the health department in terms of enforcement. Uh, I understand the the mask directive is a is a please do rather than you must. But can you explain that to people about why the I guess why the health department can't enforce it or hasn't enforced it? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this comes down to both um, a logistical uh, challenge and a staffing challenge. Um, we have 102 people in our health department, and um, we have a business response team, a quarantine and isolation response team, outbreak management team. Um, we're supporting businesses with, through the task force. Uh, we are conducting case and contact investigations. We, um, we are doing drive-through testing, and we are also trying to um, uphold our um, essential service commitment to the public. So, um, so the idea that we would be responsible or in a position to be able to follow up on every complaint um, about people who aren't wearing masks um, is both logistically and staffing-wise impossible from our perspective. However, there are uh, there are resources, given that now employees must wear masks, um, there are resources that um, on the, the governor's website has has a link where people can file a complaint um, if, if um, individuals within businesses aren't wearing masks. But in terms of uh, customers and others wearing masks, we, um, we continue to push that. We continue to recognize it as one of the very few tools we have available to us in fighting this. We don't have a vaccine, we don't have treatment. We have hand washing, we have social and physical distancing, we have masks, and uh, and we, you know, and and that's about it. That's about all we have available to us. So we, we want to continue to push those messages that um, that masks are um, are protecting each other and um, and that they should be worn, but um, we don't we don't have the resources to be able to enforce it um, countywide. Erica, this is Chris Halterman from Liberty Road, and I have a question. Sure. Um, so you talked about the fact that you didn't really have any data on any of the uh, spike in in uh, cases coming from protests. Is our Whatcom County Health Department specifically asking whether or not they attended these protests? Because it has been reported that uh, numerous health departments were uh, told not to ask that question. Are you asking them, have you attended a local or statewide or any protest in the last two weeks? As we go through the, the, at the extensive interview process, we ask them if they have had contact with other individuals, if they have been close to other individuals, if they have attended any sort of event or activity where they may have been exposed. We don't specifically call out protests, but we, uh, but we ask them that kind of a question um, and, and, you know, sort of work through with them about um, what may have happened during the last couple of weeks. Okay, so, so then we don't know then specifically what large events they may have been at because that question's not being asked. We are asking that question. We're not asking specifically if they went to a rally or protest. We're asking them if they've been to an event or other activity where they may have been exposed or where they, they may have exposed others. So we ask it more generally. Okay. I, we Thank don't you. want to ask leading questions so, right. uh, so people feel 
so um, they they can't answer them honestly. The, the, the purpose of the interview is to really get honest answers and complete answers out of those that we're interviewing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have another question from Robert. Robert, please unmute and ask your question. Hi, thank you. Uh, I was wondering if you had any numbers on the use of the Motel 6 quarantine facility and as the the um, uh, hotel at the airport that's been secured, has that been needed? Mm -hmm. uh, thus far, the, the uh, facility at the airport has not um, been needed. And the numbers really uh, sort of vacillate each day for the facility, um, the Byron Street facility. Um, mm. uh, we've had as many, I believe we've had as many as um, 14 rooms um, being occupied and um, as few as zero, obviously. Um, but it really depends on the day and, the, and um, what is happening in the community and the ability for uh, people to safely isolate. So um, I believe we have um, um, some new intakes today as well. And, um, and it just, it, the, the goal is to make sure that it's not at capacity so we have room to move if we need additional people to go into the facility. Thank you. We yeah. have another question from Key. Key, please unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Um, a follow-up to the, the mask question, Erica, you had indicated that uh, logistically the health department, uh, logistically and staffing-wise, the health department um, uh, essentially can't enforce the, the mask request. Um, but the other question I had was, can you enforce it as an organization as well? Do you have the ability to do so under the powers that you have? Uh, with the directive that you have in place now. Thank you. Yeah, no, um, we, the directive is, um, is not an enforcement mechanism. It is a, uh, it's a strong statement by our health officer. Um, our health officer could, uh, could write a, a, a mandate, but at this point we have not chosen to do, to do so because of the logistical and staffing issues. But, um, but, that is that is an option if needed and if we were able to figure out how to actually enforce it. Erica, I have another question. This is Chris from Liberty Road. Um, so we have an uptick in cases, but do we have Chris, an increase in hospitalizations? We do not. Um, I'd have to look at the hospital data from today. Uh, but that is an area where we're still, um, we are still meeting our metrics in terms of hospital capacity. Thank and, you. And I think, you know, I, as, as we know uh, from looking at, looking at data um, around the country and from the experiences of other countries, um, w what we're seeing is because, because that, that switch in the demographic um, to primarily people under, um, 30, we are not seeing, um, and in our case and in, in contact investigations, we're not seeing the severity of illness that we do among older populations. So there's less need for, um, for, medical, for medical treatment and care. As a reminder, I would like us to ask folks to use the chat function when they have questions. Uh, the next question uh, request has come from Robert Mittendorf. Robert, please unmute and go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, I had forgotten to follow up that question uh, earlier about use of the quarantine facility at the Motel 6. Um, you gave a like a peak number of 14, but do you have a total usage over time, the number of people who've been there? Oh, um, I do not. We could probably provide, we, I know we could provide that to you. I just don't know it off the top of my head. Okay. Um, you guys have my email if you wouldn't mind sending. And uh, I, I had accidentally signed up for a third question, so you can ignore that one right after key. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Key, please unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Um, 
Erica, is there, um, I'm asking this because we get, we've had a few questions from um, a num uh, some readers. Um, you know, down in Seattle, they had offered free testing for people who uh, were at the protests and the rallies. Is that anything that the health department is considering offering here as well? Uh, that's it, thank you. Okay. Um, we have we have talked about that, and at this point, um, we have we have chosen not to do that. Um, however, if if people have health insurance, the insurance commissioner has um, has stated that health insurance may not charge copays, deductibles, or any other fees associated with uh, getting a COVID test. So COVID tests are free for anyone who is insured, and uh, there is a um, a federal program that allows for uh, labs and the health department and other uh, medical providers to be reimbursed for any cost associated with testing uninsured individuals. So there should be no cost for people um, who, um, who want to be tested. There are no more questions in the chat box. Um, I think it's time that we can um, move on. Just as a reminder that this recording will be made available at the Whatcom County Government's YouTube channel and on the media page of our website at www.whatcomcounty.us slash COVID. Erica, do you have any closing comments? No, thank you for joining us and uh, we will keep you apprised on our progress in relation to um, phase two at, in the coming days.